I was brought up and was born in Japan. And only things I remember about my father is when uh, he was fighting with my, my mother. I was about two years old. And he later got killed, so I never really got to know him. And my mother left me for quite a long time with my grandmother. And, you know, my favorite playground when I was small was at the graveyard at the Buddhist temple. And it was, you know, it was quite interesting because there was always the, there was plenty of food I can find. <laughs> there, was always, there was always the favorite uh, grave spot I can go to to find uh, my favorite food. And, and then and I spent, so that's, you know, I spent a lot of time at the, uh, at the Buddhist temple often. And when I was uh, living with my grandmother, when I took, uh, when my mother took me back once again that uh, to her, to live with her, that um, she got married again, twice more. But she always got divorced. And I was moved from place to place every year. And I sometimes have to go to two schools, new schools. Um, every year, you know. And it was very difficult for me. I, it was, I couldn't find any new friend. I was always rejected as a stranger. So I grew up not trusting anybody. And I grew up not knowing what love is. I was so hungry for love, something to fill my heart. And when I was 16, I became so desperate, I asked the Buddha for an answer for my life, the truth of my life, something that, that can fill my heart. And he was silent. He never answered my prayer. And also I asked uh, my ancestors for an answer. They never replied also to me. That was quite a disappointing for me because I thought they would reply, but they didn't. And I thought that I better try the, something else. So I went to a Shinto temple, or Shinto shrine, and well, I was told there is seven million gods in, in Shintoism. So I thought maybe one of seven million gods will have a mercy on me to answer. But they did, did, um, none of their gods uh, didn't answer my prayer, didn't answer the cry of my heart. And after that, I decided to go to yoga school. And when I came back from yoga school, uh, finishing the course, that a strange thing started happening every day. And I was terrified every day to leave because suddenly, always I found myself locked in a coffin. It was real. I was conscious. Something was trying to kill me in the coffin, and I couldn't get out. I banged the lid of the coffin so hard, I couldn't get out. But finally, when I managed to get out, I found myself floating in a total darkness. There was nothing around me. There was no light, nobody, no sound. I cried, and I cried for help, that, but nobody heard me. And it was such a lonely place, and it was, there was only death in the darkness. And I went down, and down, and down, and down. And something hideous always pulled me downward. I couldn't stop myself going down. I didn't want to go down, but I was going down. I 
I went down so fast, I was screaming for help. But I couldn't stop myself going down. Later, only God, you know, she showed me that they, um, he was showing me that he, unless I come to know him, that I will go to the darkness forever. And I went to the gate of hell. And I was so terrified every day. Because I knew that what would happen to me. And I was hearing strange noises and voices every day. And I was walking around in the evening without knowing. But nothing like that happened in my life before. So um, I was very curious. And I was terrified, but I wanted to find out more about what's happening. And so um, after I went to a um, school called Silver Mind Control, where they taught me that New Age, psychic power, and magic, and all kind of things. And during the course, they taught me to invite the two beings to guide into my heart. And I did. And from that time on, these two beings, two guide, was with me all the time. And whenever I needed to find out something, whenever I needed the power, I just needed to, I just had to go and meet them and got whatever I wanted. And I was getting so desperate. I thought that if I had more power, I could find something to change me, to fill my empty heart. And also by that time that I was leaving my body, my spirit, and traveling around in my spirit. And I enjoyed phoning to my friend to tell them what they what they got in their house and what they were doing. I thought that my heart will be satisfied if I show off my power to the people. But I wasn't. I wasn't satisfied at all. And I knew, I tried everything I could find, I could place my hand on, and I felt. So um, I thought maybe if I go to a new place, I could find something to change me. So I left Japan, it was in 86. And I started traveling like a hippie from place to place every day and getting involved in drugs and alcohol and smoking and all kinds of things. But none of the new towns, new villages I went to changed me. I didn't find anything new. I didn't find anything to satisfy my heart. I was so disappointed, and, and, but when I was in the UK once, I was traveling in Europe at, at that time, and before I came to Africa, and one day when I was in England, somebody invited me to come to a church. Well, I never really went to a church before, so I decided to try this new, something new. And it was quite a surprise to me when I came to this church and saw pe the people worshipping God, the God I never knew before. When, I, when they pr were praising and worshipping God, I saw something beautiful 
such beauty, such peace, I never saw before. I hungered for that. That's something I never had before, I never seen before. And so I went back to the church just to listen to the worship. And again and again. My English wasn't that good that time, so um, you know, I never understood what the pastor was saying uh, during his preaching. So I only went back to listen to their worship. And they, just because I didn't really make any friend, I stopped going to the church. But there had, was a missionary who was, English missionary who was born in China to a missionary parent, and, and who was by, at that time, happened to be at the church, and he came to see me one day. And he started talking to me about Jesus. And as he started quoting the Word of God from the Bible, these two guides I had in my heart, more, maybe I had more, more than two, these two beings I had who gave me power and knowledge, I knew they were in such a panic. And I was watching the whole things, and they were laughing at this um, missionary. But I knew in my heart they were losing the battle. I knew they were powerless before the Word of God as he quoted the Word of God from the Bible to me. It was quite a surprise. I was shocked. I thought they had everything. I mean, of course, these beings I had in me was demons. Initially, I, was con I thought I was controlling them, but more and more, they came to control me. I had to do what they um, tell me to do. Anyway, this, when I found them being powerless before the Word of God, it was quite a shock to me. These beings who gave me power and knowledge couldn't do anything. So um, it was a beginning of change in my life because I saw, wow, there's something more powerful than I already knew. This the God of Bible is more powerful than these beings I had in me. And I wanted to find more, uh, I wanted to find out more about this God, this God of Bible. And somehow, after that, I managed to get hold of a, a book on the mission. And I wrote to the mission organization from all around the world to ask them that if I can come and work with them. I wrote to about 50 organizations. I, mean, I, I didn't know God at that time, but they asked me if I can come and work. And I mean, when they replied to me, 99% of them said to me that, no, you first need to go to Bible school and contact us later. And there was just one exception who, uh, who gave me a good reply. And, and that was the use of the mission. And then I had the choice of going to, uh, choices of going to either to Cameroon or Zimbabwe, and also Thailand. And somehow I chose to come to Zimbabwe, but I changed my mind when I was in Nairobi. And I thought, wow, this is such a nonsense. 
I mean, I still haven't been to so many places. So I, I decided to search again in Africa for the truth I wanted to find. And after three months, I found myself in the downtown Nairobi. I was totally broken. I had no more hope. I wanted to die. I wanted to kill myself. I had no more money. <laughs> and I thought again, well, maybe I still can try this go to Bible. And I decided to go down to Zimbabwe again. And so I hitchhiked from Nairobi to Zimbabwe all the way. And I found that when I came to Wawan Base in Nairobi, no, I'm sorry, that um, in Lusaka, oh, not even in Lusaka, that was in G Harare, Zimbabwe. The um, people was waiting for me and praying for me, for my arrival. And while I was on the base, the Lord continued to speak to me through the people. And people knew that I was not, I didn't know God. But I was trying hard to pretend to know God. I didn't want to get rejected by the people. I had enough of it when I was small, when I was growing up. So um, that was very difficult for, for me to do. And to be somebody I'm not. And one day when I was there that God touched my heart so much. I found myself crying. I didn't want to carry the burden I was carrying. It was so heavy on me. I didn't want to carry it anymore. And I saw Jesus coming to me. And he, he extended his hand towards me. He didn't need to speak. I knew that he accepted me. And so I stretched my hand also towards him. I knew he wanted me to come to him. And from there I moved to Mozambique. At that time that it was still in the war. And on the first day I came to Mozambique, somebody, a soldier tried to shoot me and kill me, and I thought, well, what am I doing here in the middle of the war? And I was very scared. But they, um, I knew soon after that why I came to Mozambique. And God gave me a, a vision when I was in Japan, just before I left Japan in 86. It was a vision of beautiful black mountain and beautiful blue sky and white cloud moving in the background. And there was such a vast ground before me. And the vision came back to me again and again during my journey throughout Europe and Africa. I knew in my heart somehow this vision has such an important meaning for my life that I didn't know what it was, what it meant. And when I came to Mozambique, 
I saw the place with my own eye. Then I knew it is God of the Bible who brought me to Mozambique. And right before the mountain in the forest, I knelt down and I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And it was love who was speaking to me. It was Father God who spoke to me and said, I will be your father that you always wanted. I'll be with you forever. When he said that to me, I just broke down and cried. I knew for the first time, for the first time, I had a father who loves me. And that was in 88, February. And since that time, I've stayed in Mozambique and ministering to the people and sharing the love of Christ for the people. And I grew up among the people of Mozambique and getting to know him and growing up. And it was quite a challenge also. <laughs> but I knew the Lord wanted me to be in Mozambique to serve him. And my heart was not empty again anymore. My heart was filled with such joy and peace. The joy and peace I always wanted in my heart. So, this is my testimony. <laughs>